You might have heard recently that the US banks and the dollar could fail. Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Iran, they are all ready to kill the US dollar. If the US dollar loses its place as the dominant global currency, we could see its value plunge overnight and the borrowing costs all over the world would rise up so quickly and there will be a huge shift in the global economic power and governance structure. So why is everyone talking about this? Why is the US dollar under threat to lose its global reserve currency status? Exactly when and how will that unfold? Should you be worried about your US investments? I will uncover all of that for you in the next few minutes. To understand whether the US dollar is under threat, we must first understand its current significance. At this moment, the dollars dominate the global economy in two key ways as petrol dollars and as the world's reserve currency. Being petrol dollars would mean that oil importing countries must use US dollar to purchase oil and this will then strengthen the demand for the US dollar and solidify its status as the primary global reserve currency. Currently, 90% of all globally traded oil is priced in US dollars. So how did the dollar become the world's reserve currency? We need to go back to the mid-1920s when US dollar and British sterling together made up 97% of global foreign exchange but with the US economy growing stronger than ever while the British pound went downhill, it was no surprise that in 1931, the British abandoned the gold standard allowing the dollar to replace the pound as the leading international reserve currency. And by 1944, global currencies were no longer linked to gold but instead, they were pegged to the US dollar, which itself was linked to gold under the arrangement known as the Bretton Woods Agreement. And from there onwards, the US dollar officially became the world's reserve currency. So what about petrol dollars? Fast forward to 1971 when the US suffered from the cost of the Vietnam War and together with an increase in domestic spending, it could no longer afford to pay its foreign creditors in gold. So President Nixon took the US off the gold standard and allowed the dollar to float. And with the currency no longer backed by gold, why would anyone maintain faith in it? Well, here comes Saudi Arabia. In 1973, US President Nixon struck a deal with Saudi Arabia, the then third largest oil producer in the world, to price all international oil trade in US dollars. And by 1975, all OPEC nations agreed to settle oil trades exclusively in dollars. And from there, the petrol dollar system was established and continues to operate until today. And that's the story of how dollars conquered the world. Now, the US is definitely not the most popular kid in class that everyone likes to play with and to make things worse, some countries are actively seeking to diminish the dollar's influence. First in line would be Russia, the outlier of the US dollar denominated economy that is eager and desperate to find a way out. And then of course we have China since tension between the two superpowers are only getting worse day by day. And other than that, Saudi Arabia is also not happy with the US either, mainly because of the Israel-Palestine conflict, the shale oil revolution and what more that the US lifted the sanctions on Iran. So yes, another member has joined the hate club. And with these main leaders, together with a few sidekicks, what has been done to challenge the dollar? Well, right after the US sanctions imposed on Russia in early 2022, Russia retaliated by refusing to accept dollars or euros for its oil and natural gas. This move was reported as a big deal as it broke the dollar's monopoly in oil trading, which had lasted for so many years. And earlier this year in March 2023, China executed its first ever UN settled energy deal, 65,000 tons of liquefied natural gas LNG from the United Arab Emirates UAE. And just to add salt to the wound, there were also plans to reduce the dependency of dollar beyond the petrol sales. And since the beginning of 2022, the trades using Russian ruble and Chinese yuan have increased eightfold. And there are also reports stating that Russia and Iran are working on creating a gold-backed cryptocurrency 
to replace the US dollar in international trade payments. But we are not done yet. Same year in 2022, Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO had agreed to increase the use of their national currencies in trade between member countries, which consists of several South and Central Asia countries. That is, of course, led by China and followed by superpowers such as Russia and India. And in March 2023, China and Brazil reached a deal to dump the US dollar as their go-to currency when carrying out trade and transactions and trade in their own currencies instead. And let's not forget the five BRICS nations that came back as a big deal and potential trade that to some people can challenge the US and its allies. Formed by Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, the BRICS nations now contribute 31.5% to the global GDP overtaking the G7 nations which contribute to 30.7% of the global GDP. And together, the BRICS nations have launched the New Development Bank as an alternative to the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And this bank would be attractive to emerging countries that have painful experiences with the IMF that often require major structural adjustments programs and drastic measures. And not only that, there are also plans to extend from BRICS to BRICS Plus, which may include Argentina, Egypt, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Senegal and Thailand. And this extension, if successful, could lead to a greater BRICS influence in international affairs, challenging the current balance of power. Still, we have to go back to the initial question. Could the Chinese Yuan possibly replace the US dollar? Let's set aside the alarming headlines and really look at the matter objectively. I will compare the US dollar and the Chinese Yuan in three crucial areas that matter for a world reserve currency. The first criteria of being a reserve currency is how easy you can spend the money. And as of today, the US dollar enjoys worldwide acceptance and is the primary reserve currency held by central banks all over the world. And in fact, many countries such as Timor-Leste, Panama, Myanmar, Cambodia, etc. use dollars as an official currency alongside their local currencies. So it's doing an excellent job in terms of spendability. While on the other hand, the Chinese Yuan has been subject to government control and manipulation in the past. While China is now attempting to increase adoption as a global currency, promoting the use of yuan in trade and investment, it still unfortunately lags behind and is not as universally accepted as the US dollar. But China does not have real capital markets. China has capital controls. And so in terms of currency, people are going to prefer the dollar to the yuan. And to put it into perspective, 90% of the global foreign exchange transactions in 2022 were still conducted in US dollar. And this strong position won't be easily affected by events like Russia-China trade, ensuring its importance for many years to come. And other than being spendable, you also want to be able to save a currency. And to be savable means you can store it as savings or investments and trust in its value over time. The USA has undoubtedly the world's biggest and most mature financial market. So you can store a part of your money as investment without worrying about currency devaluation due to inflation or a lack of investment opportunities. And during times of uncertainty, the US dollar is always deemed to be a safe haven to store your money. And the economic strength of the US contributes to the stability of the US dollar as it indicates that the country can and will support its currency and maintain its value over a long period of time. Now let's see how China fares in this aspect. To attract capital inflow, China has been opening up its financial market to foreign investors, giving a greater access to the country's stock and bond markets. Great. However, as the China official website said it themselves, at this moment, renminbi or Chinese Yuan accounts for only 2.79% of global forex reserves and foreign investors' holdings in China's stock and bond markets stand at a relatively low level of just 3-5%. to So 2.79% as a global forex reserve currency might not seem too bad, right? Well, not until you found out that US dollar accounts for 59% of the global foreign exchange reserves. And the same thing goes when you just take a look at its stock market's value. So unless some miracle happens, I just don't see how half of the investors in the world will withdraw their money and invest in China instead. That's just borderline impossible. But to be fair, while present-day China can't defeat the US, can future China do so? 
To me, the answer is unlikely. There's another factor that makes people think twice about switching their dollars to the Chinese yuan, and that is China's unpredictable policy. Compared to the US government's continuous commitment to maintaining stable and predictable policies, the Chinese government, on the other hand, frequently intervenes in the economy and currency as well. And sometimes they can get really, really creative and surprise the world to say the least. And regardless of whether the policies are good or bad, the uncertainty of the future itself will scare off investors and make them think twice before investing in China. To make it simple, investors hate uncertainties. Lastly, liquidity is important as it makes the transaction process easy, with parties able to buy and sell the currency without causing significant price fluctuations. And when there are enough transactions happening all at the same time, you will have liquidity. And as I've mentioned earlier, the US dollar is the dominant currency in international trade and is also used in pricing commodities like oil and also precious metals. And combined with the enormous size of the US financial market, it goes without saying that the US has no problem providing liquidity. And the US Federal Reserve or we call the Fed also takes its responsibility seriously to ensure the dollars won't run out of liquidity. So it's really really hard to beat the US given the large pool of dollars will attract more people to swim in it. And on the other hand, the Chinese Yuan struggles with letting go of capital controls. These controls allow the government to direct the economic activity and conduct central planning to align with its growth vision. And by monitoring the inflow and also outflow of capital, China can prevent capital flight or attacks on its currency. So instead of letting the currency float according to the market demand, China aims to maintain the exchange rate within a target range. This is important to China as a significant part of the country's growth is led by exports and they naturally want to maintain a competitive exchange rate to keep business running smoothly. So instead of providing full liberalization for liquidity, like what the US dollar has been doing as an international reserve currency, China has made the opposite choice and at least for now, there's no sign that they will change their minds anytime soon. With all being said, there are two things for sure. One, China will keep trying and trying to expand its influence around the world. And two, it's way, way too overblown to announce that they will one day replace the dollar and be the global reserve currency at this moment or anytime in the near future. And while I must agree China looks unstoppable, keep in mind that it has its own challenges as well. Geopolitically, China has several disputes that could disrupt the relationship like the South China Sea disputes that include Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia and Brunei, the East China Sea disputes with Japan, diplomatic tension with Australia and India who's in the five bricks always meddle in between the US and China and hasn't really picked a side. And let's not forget that there are also border disputes too between India and China as well. So instead of a simple switch from the US dollar to the Chinese yuan, in my opinion, what is more likely to happen is the fragmentation of the market. We can expect to see more bilateral and also regional agreements using local currencies in transactions between two countries or smaller groups of countries. But in the meantime, the US dollar should and will remain the dominant currency at least for the near future, given its widespread acceptance, liquidity and also the stability of the US economy. The market fragmentation will not bring down the US dollar as the most dominant player. It will only diversify the global financial system, allowing multiple currencies to play a role. That's all from me. Let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.